Okay, so Fanny Lie Delivered, which is the third film by Thomas Clay, who made The Great Ecstasy of Robert Carmichael back, I think it was 2005, which was a kind of debut feature that caused an enormous amount of outrage and walkouts uh, at the Cannes Film Festival. This is set, it's a historical, well, it's a historically set drama. It's set after the execution of Charles I in what is, quote, an England now a dream. Maxime Peake, who obviously is currently in the news for other things, this incidentally was filmed three years ago, um, is the titular uh, Fanny Lie delivered, Fanny Lie, who at the beginning we hear will be delivered from one light into another, lives on a remote Shropshire farm with her son and her husband John, played by Charles Dance. John is a God fearing man who does not spare the rod when it comes to his family. And then this mysterious couple arrive, firstly seeking refuge, but then they kind of inveigle their way into the household. And they are spouting mantras about religious and sexual freedom and you know that what's going to happen is that this is going to cause chaos in the light household here's a clip so rebecca where are you be headed after you see the constable looking for work i guess i've got a servant so i know my way around a pail of milk or a pair of breeches it's such a misfortune to tell you to it gives me the shivers we'll get by like we always do don't you worry about me. You no family you can go home to? Help you out in your hour of need? I will. I suppose Mr Ashby's your master now. Thomas ain't my master. No man is. I go where I likes with whom I likes. So is that like that, a washing up scene or a bath scene? It's, it's a washing machine scene. Oh, right. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, those 17th century washing machines. So that's basically the kind of central idea of the of the film is that it is a society in flux. It is a time of, um, you know, uh, strange religious, social, political change. The inspirations for it are partly from that Christopher Hill book, The World Turned Upside Down. Visually, um, Thomas Clay has cited Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate, Terence Malick's Days of Heaven, and it's easy to see why because when you look at the film, it does have a very, you know, a very powerful look. As I said before, it was, this was shot, you know, many, many years ago. It's been three years in post production, not least because Thomas Clay um, wrote the score himself in the end, and that took a really long time. And I think the film, people had almost considered it to be a lost film by the time it finally turned up at, I think it was the London uh, Film Festival. And it's an interesting movie. I was very suspicious going in because I I really didn't like The Great Ecstasy of Robert Carmichael. I, you know, I, 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 I did not get on with it at all. I didn't walk out of it, but I didn't like it at all. I quite liked Soy Cowboy, which is Thomas Clay's second film. And I went into this feeling deeply suspicious of it. Actually, what was interesting is that it, 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 it looks like it's going one way and then it ends up taking a, 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 a left turn, which made it much more interesting than it could have been. I mean, people have drawn comparisons with which Finder General is a, is a kind of, a, you know, aesthetic touchstone. Actually, it's closer in tone to Ben Wheatley's A Field in England, which incidentally is a film I like better, um, but there is a kind of hallucinogenic connection there. And um, although I think it's flawed, um, there are moments in, the, in which the dialogue doesn't ring true. There's moments in which the narration doesn't ring true. One of the reasons those moments stand out is because for the rest of the film, it does seem to be fairly hermetically sealed. And so when it when things go wrong, they sort of stand out much more. And although it's flawed, it is a film with a vision. I mean, Thomas Clay is a, has, has a singular vision, which is on screen. It may not be a vision that everybody wants to, you know, to embrace. But it is a film with a vision, whatever that, whatever that vision may be. And and I, as I said, as somebody who went into it feeling deeply suspicious of it, having not been a huge fan of Thomas Clay's work before, I did think, okay, well, there is something singular about that film. It doesn't entirely work, but in the moments that it does, it's it's impressive enough. And where can I see that? It, that is available on the BFI player.